Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to our um, prototyping and manufacturing panel discussion. This is our third Zoom expert panel we've done as a part of Innovation Week 2020 here at Unimed. Um, my name is Tyler Scher. I'm a licensing specialist at Unimed. Um, I'm, I'm privileged to be moderating this panel with um, the, these esteemed local experts. Um, it's been a real pleasure being able to know them and work with them on a few projects over the last few years. And I know you'll learn a lot from them as have I over the last few years. Um, okay, so a few quick reminders. Um, we, if you missed Monday's excellent panel on SBIRS TTR funding, small business funds, that is now up on the Unimed YouTube channel. You can find that. You should be able to find a link to it on the Unimed website as well. The panel yesterday on um, local web and app development and software development was a great panel as well. If you missed that, you can also find that on Unimed's website or up on our YouTube channel. And likewise, this panel will be recorded and uh, shared on YouTube as well after, after the discussion today. So, um, and then just a quick reminder that tomorrow our, is our main event of Innovation Week. We have the Research Innovation Award Ceremony, um, again, on Zoom this year. Um, it is 2020 after all, uh, so on Zoom, and that'll be from noon to one tomorrow. So please join us for that. Okay, I'm going to give some brief introductions uh, for our esteemed experts today, and then we'll turn it over one at a time. They'll give a little bit of background um, on, on what they do, their specialties, um, their, their organizations, um, the, the capabilities of those organizations in terms of manufacturing, prototyping services, um, um, and then maybe highlight a few projects. And then we'll open up to Q&A. If you have any questions, you can those through the chat feature. Um, you, can, you can virtually raise your hand uh, through Zoom as well, and I'll, hopefully I'll see your raised hand and call on you. Um, and hopefully we'll have a chance for some discussion too in the second half of the panel today. So, um, so uh, our, our three experts. So today we're joined by uh, Brian Nahr. Dr. Nahr is an assistant professor and the director of the Machining and Prototyping Corps in the Department of Biomechanics at UNO. Um, his research takes an interdisciplinary approach by combining clinical, experimental, computational, and design concepts to develop clinically translatable rehabilitation. Um, Brian is uh, joined by his partner in crime, Travis, Travis Vander Hayden. Uh, Travis is a, an Air Force vet um, and a dedicated leader and engineer focused on innovation and adaptation of cutting edge technologies for use in robotics, mechatronics, and biomechanics. Um, so that, those, they'll be our, our first presenters. Um, after Brian and Travis, we will be, uh, we'll hear from Tyler Kefeller, Vice President of Omaha Custom Manufacturing, which is a full service um, contract manufacturing company. Um, as a member of the executive management team, he oversees business development and project management, and he'll be joined by, by part of his team as well. And they'll present on the awesome services and capabilities they have at Omaha Custom Manufacturing. And then finally, we'll hear from Shabri, uh, Kyler Meredith at Shabri. He specializes in rapid prototyping, batch manufacturing, and product development using additive manufacturing methods to bring designs to life. And Kyler, I believe, will be joined by Rakesh, if he, if he the owner of Shabri. He's, he's a local prosthetist and inventor, um, and he may have a few points to add as well. So um, without further ado, we'll go ahead and let Brian and Travis lead us off and, and, and uh, tell us about all the exciting things going on at the Machining and Prototyping Corps at UNO Biomechanics. All right, well, thank you, Tyler. Um, as Tyler said, I am the director of our machining and prototyping core at UNO Biomechanics. Um, we are a university uh, service center uh, that's uh, here at UNO within the Department of Biomechanics. Um, and I'm joined by Ty uh, Travis, excuse me, Travis Vander Hayden, who's one of our um, design engineers. Uh, and we also have one other design engineer on staff, Russell Buffum, who is probably right behind Travis right now. Um, we're a, a relatively small operation. It's myself and our two staff members, as well as a few student workers that we pull from the UNO and UNL um, <clears throat> student body uh, in such disciplines such as biomechanics, computer science, electrical, computer engineering, things like that. Um, what we do is we really specialize in kind of research driven prototyping. So uh, a good way to explain that is uh, we work a lot and we've our genesis of our of our core was through um, having research on campus and having you know specialized needs or specialized um, 
uh, instrumentation that didn't exist to answer the research questions and, and the, the problems that were trying to be solved by faculty here. Um, so uh, in, in the early days before we were formal core and, and outward facing to the community, it was Travis and, and a few other faculty that were trying to solve these problems. Uh, we've grown from there and certainly refined our processes and, and, and formulated more of a business model around that. But that's the kind of heart of what we do is we take research driven and, and difficult and unforeseen problems and try to solve them. Um, we do that through a, a number of different ways. That's through you know, design and, and prototyping from you know, conceptualization and, and just the very beginning of a project all the way through, hey, we have a great idea, but we just don't know how to build it. Um, and how do you actually fabricate something that you know, may not have been fabricated before? Um, <clears throat> so fabrication is one of our, uh, our specialties. Certainly we have a wide range of equipment and, and methods that Travis will talk about uh, in a bit. Um, we also take care of a lot of the programming electronic needs that uh, accompany a lot of these devices um, we find, especially in our world. Nothing is just a piece of equipment. It also needs some sort of brain or smarts that go with it. So that usually means some sort of microprocessor, electronics programming to accompany it, whether for, it's for data collection or some sort of interface. Um, certainly we can do simple tasks such as, you know, designing housings, um, you know, 3D printing, um, uh, specialized components and, and coverings for whatever you may have that needs to be protected. Um, and we also deal with, you know, installation and support of those projects as well. So if you if we design something and you need to, uh, you need assistance in how do we actually uh, install it and support it long term, we can do that as well. Um, a lot of, uh, a lot of what we do involves working with the community in terms of, uh, designing and, and solving clinical problems uh, through the biomechanics department. That's uh, obviously a, a niche that we've had um, grow from our, our core. Um, certainly assistive devices is one area, uh, as Tyler mentioned, if we could mention some areas that we work a lot in, assistive devices is certainly one of those. Uh, we have partnerships with places such as Emanuel, Creighton, and QLI, where we work with clinicians, um, physical therapists, occupational therapists, that see you know, real world problems with their patients and with uh, community members that are trying to regain function or, or integrate uh, back into their uh, kind of daily life. So we've done a lot of kind of ad hoc designs and one-off designs for um, individual patients with individual needs um, to help their therapy and, and their daily life. Um, in terms of using the machining and prototyping core, uh, it's a relatively simple process. We do have a website. Um, uh, you can generally find it on Google if you search machining and prototyping Omaha. Um, and uh, we have at the bottom of that page uh, a link for a project initiation form as well as our rates, our hourly rates. So um, if you have a project that you're interested in, uh, in working with us on or just want to explore how it will work, uh, feel free to send in that project initiation form to our email address. Uh, and we'll contact you and set up that initial kickoff meeting to see what we can do. Um, Travis, if you can, can you talk a little bit about some of the specific equipment and fabrication and, and methodology that we use? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I am Travis Vander Hayden. I'm the lead research development engineer here at the Biomechanics Machining and Prototyping Core. And uh, it's, it's my job as well as the rest of our team to leverage all of these uh, different technologies to create and, and uh, put together this holistic prototype development cycle. Uh, and, you know, and we fit into that cycle kind of any place you, you would like. Um, so Dr. Nara mentioned uh, we do basic fabrication. You know, we are in the additive space. We're in the traditional machining space. We'll work in plastics, composites, uh, metals, and, and uh, specialty alloys, and uh, even wood if you need something made just of, of pure wood. Um, we do maintain on site a full uh, five axis CNC. We've got a, a large bed plasma cutter. We have large format, small format FDM, additive manufacturing, all 3D printers. We do also use uh, SLA, SLS, um, and a polyjet technology for our different printing needs. And our team is capable of, of turning basically any project uh, into, into something a little bit more using these technologies, using these methods to uh, get to the final product. So beyond that, we spend a lot of time 
uh, even right here in the office uh, doing programming, design work, uh, and everywhere in between. And that is, uh, that is what I mean by that holistic process. We know that every device, every prototype, everything that any customer would come here for um, needs a wide range of, of activities done to be able to get from start to finish of that project. And uh, that's, that's the service that we, that we effectively provide is uh, we can fill in all those gaps, you know, zero to a hundred, or we can fill in the small parts that you're not able to do. Um, and, and again, anywhere in between. All right. That's excellent, Brian and Travis, thank you. Um, did you have something else you wanted to add, Travis? No, I was just gonna pass it off to you, make sure you knew. Oh, fantastic, yeah, yeah. So I have a quick question for both of you then. So if I'm a, a faculty who has a, a cool new idea, um, what, what are some things I should consider before talking to you? How much information, how much do you need before coming to you? Can I come to you with the back of the napkin drawing or do I need to have something more fleshed out and how does that kind of interaction uh, play out then? Yeah, so we, we see any number of things along that spectrum. So if you have just a twinkle in your eye or just a, a very kind of um, general idea of a problem you'd like to solve and maybe some either clinical knowledge on the, on the problem or, or firsthand knowledge in terms of what works or doesn't work, we can start there and, and help you ideate and, and kind of conceptualize what that solve, how, how to solve that problem. Um, or if you have a, a napkin drawing that you need some more sophisticated CAD drawn up for all the way through, you have everything ready to go and you just need access to the machines and the, the expertise to how to use those machines to build it, we can handle that. Um, I think one of our strengths is being able to take projects from anywhere along that spectrum. Certainly we have um, the expertise and the experience in the research world that allows us to draw upon solving the problem along the way um, and figuring out, you know, um, the research beyond be, behind the specific problem that you're trying to solve and, and how that affects the fabrication or the needs of the device. So if you have, if you need help with that, that is part of our expertise and part of our kind of niche in, in the manufacturing area. That's perfect. Thanks, Brian. Okay. Um, I think we will pass it off now to our, our second um, organization. So we'll pass it off to Omaha Custom Manufacturing. Um, go ahead, take it away, Tyler. Sure, thanks Tyler for, for the introduction. Um, so our company, Omaha Custom Manufacturing, um, I would say we have three, three real areas of focus. Um, one being just that, a contract manufacturing company. So um, we produce the pieces and parts that um, larger manufacturers, uh, original equipment manufacturers, or, or some tier one suppliers uh, need to build their larger product, whatever that may be. Um, so some examples of what we do in that area um, would be our production stamping division. So um, uh, production stamping, think um, little uh, widgets, uh, pieces and parts, uh, typically metal, but we can do some other materials as well that would fit in the palm of your hand. Um, you know, larger OEMs and, and such need those to build their larger products. So we specialize in producing those for them. Um, we've got punch presses ranging anywhere um, from 60 to 110 ton. Um, some of our other capabilities that, that fit within that same area um, are injection molding capabilities. Um, so mold making and design along with actually running um, those plastic parts. Um, we can do that as well for, for our customers. Um, and then we have a light metal fab division um, again, um, welding, uh, MIG, TIG, and spot welding, um, bending, notching, um, punching, um, those types of things in our light metal fab uh, division. Um, and, and so that's one area of focus. The other area of focus is uh, our consulting uh, work. So um, kind of like what Brian and Travis do, we, we see customers uh, come to us from, from all different walks of life, uh, big companies, small companies, or just individuals. Um, that have an idea, want to perfect maybe an existing process or product that they already um, have um, and just need some help getting that off the ground. So um, we'll, we'll come in with them at whatever part of the process they need us to, um, anything from, from like a bar napkin to maybe something that's already in the works, but they need it to be better or they need it to be produced uh, more cheaply or more uh, efficiently. Um, whatever that may be, our team will come together and, and help uh, them do just that. Um, 
and, and so that's another area. Um, third area is uh, we have our own um, products that we manufacture and sell across the country. So, um, and we have uh, patents on, on those products as well. Um, some industries that those span are long-term care and pharmacy, um, electrical contracting, specifically work done in data centers, um, and then the railroad industry as well. Um, lots of different diverse uh, industries that we dabble in and, and have products for. Um, so yeah, those are basically our, our three main areas um, of focus. Um, some interesting and exciting projects that we're working on uh, currently, um, one being, you know, with Unimed in, in the Med Center, we're, we're helping um, kind of bring to life a, a product that the that UNMC, um, a couple doctors at UNMC uh, created. Um, it's a device that helps protect um, healthcare workers and other personnel from infectious disease. Um, so we're, so we're, I would say, in the, in the prototype uh, design stage of that, um, which is super exciting. Um, and kind of just highlights it highlights a variety of our of our areas of focus that I already mentioned. You know, uh, some consulting work, and then of course injection molding and mold making and design, um, which we're super proud of, and, and it's going very well. Um, you know, some other things that we've been talking about with the med center includes you know some uh, some MP swabs uh, for testing, um, specifically COVID nineteen. Um, so that's been great too. Um, yeah. Any, anything else, Mark? This is Mark Kefler. He's our president, CEO. I'll let him maybe say a few words and um, yeah. add anything. Yeah. One other thing that we can do that's a little bit uh, out of the ordinary for manufacturing companies, since we do have our own patented products and we do market and sell those, um, when we do have people show up, bar napkin, et cetera, we can also help them not only with the manufacturing process and the idea process, but also with patenting their product all the way up to sales and marketing of their product. So the whole continuum of idea to money in the bank, uh, we can help our customers all along the way. And uh, that's something we're really proud of and uh, we've got a lot of experience doing it. Fantastic, thanks a lot for that detail. Um, uh, let's see, as a, as a quick follow-up, I guess. Um, all right, so, um, uh, what are a few different ways that you're interested in engaging with, you know, with, with, with an inventor? So again, let's say, and, and we'll kind of touch on this maybe later on too, um, in a little more detail, but in terms of um, what should someone have before they come to you? So, you know, so kind of the same question I threw out to Brian and Travis, is a back of the napkin drawing appropriate to come to you or should they do some more prototyping prior to coming to you and maybe have something ready more for scale up? What are some of the different services you guys offer? Yeah, I would I would say similar to what Brian mentioned, we can you know we've all and we've had experience uh, joining with a customer on on all different stages of a project, all the way, you know, from hey I got this idea that I think might work to, you know, hey I, I've done uh, the research, I've done the prototype and design, I'm ready to to ramp this thing up. How how do I get this prototype uh, to be manufactured in a large scale and do that um, in a cost effective and efficient manner? Um, so, so we've done all of that and have experience doing all that. I, I would say it's whatever, it's whatever the, the customer is comfortable with. Uh, you know, I would certainly encourage uh, the customer to leverage uh, their skill set and anything they can bring to the table. Um, and, and, you know, um, yeah, so it, in what's, whatever their appetite is. So um, I would say we can join any, any step of the way. You, you yeah, I agree. Yeah. yeah. And we have, and it's, it's, it's fun. It's exciting. You know, when they, when they come with the bar napkin, a lot more work has to be done before you get it pushed through. That's for sure. Um, but that is an exciting stage. Um, you know, the difference there is you can start from scratch and you can build it from the ground up. Sometimes when we get a prototype in here, first thing we have to do is dissect the prototype, figure out what makes it tick, how it's manufactured currently. Um, sometimes you have products that come in that weren't really designed with uh, production in mind and we have to kind of go backwards and redesign some of those things. So um, we do it all along the way and uh, each one presents its own challenges and uh, uh, we can take care of it. Yeah, and I would say just to piggyback off that, so, so to may, maybe answer the question more directly, I, I suppose we would prefer to engage with the customer as early as possible. Um, because one thing that, you know, we don't like it and, and the customer uh, would for sure not like is, is you get a prototype that you really like, you're all excited about it, you're ready for, for full scale manufacturing, and you then realize you've created something that uh, cannot be manufactured to the scale that you need it to or want it to for, for the price that you wanted to 
um, as well. And so that's kind of a, a, a tough pill for some, uh, some customers to swallow. Uh, you know, these prototypes, uh, you know, they're these, uh, they're these uh, people's babies, right? So they're, they're super proud of them and, and they've spent a lot of time working with them and refining them and, and honing them. And, and then they get to, to manufacturing and they realize, well, shoot, you know, we, we've designed this thing, um, you know, from something that's a one-off to, you know, you can't, you can't do anything with it. You kind of, it kind of stops there. So then we have to go back and kind of say, okay, you know, how do we make this thing manufacturable? What things can we tweak? What things need to be changed? Um, and, and so, yeah, so to answer your question more directly, we would prefer to engage as early as possible. That's a fantastic point, Tyler. Okay, well, um, thank you, Tyler and Mark. We will we'll leave you for just a little while and go to our third um, organization. We have Shabri, and I believe I'm passing it off to Kyler here to, to lead off with Shabri. So, so go ahead, take it away, Kyler. All right, well, we are currently located in Hastings, Nebraska. Um, Rakish is the president of Shabri. He seemed to want to keep the headquarter here in Hastings. That's where he has raised his family. And so we kind of have that small town feel here, I think. And uh, what that allows us to do is really get to know our locals, local businesses. Um, a lot of the projects that we are currently prototyping and designing are for our local companies and uh, so that's something we kind of take pride in is, is being a small town company, helping other small towns as well. Um, but that doesn't limit us from, from reaching out and, and doing more global products and design as well. So um, what we do a lot of in-house obviously is rapid prototyping and consulting with, with clients to solve their everyday problems. And that's something we uh, seem to spend a lot of time on and we're, we're really good at that. Um, like everybody else has mentioned, taking a, a napkin sketch and actually creating a 3D model and then something tangible that you can actually hold is something that a lot of people really, really seek and, and want. So that's something we do a lot of. Um, some of the stuff we are currently specializing in, we uh, were a 3D printing house um, inside of Innovative Prosthetics. So we do a lot of test sockets as well as wrist orthotics and uh, that's something kind of our, our special niche that we got into and kind of how Shabri was originally created was making quick and affordable products for the people that need it most. And that's something that we, we really take pride in is, is getting that, that initial cost down for patients and clients. Because um, some, some patients aren't able to afford that real expensive medical bill. So that's something Rakesh really took pride in was being able to provide a quick and affordable solution. Um, some of the other products that we have currently been in the works of as well, we, uh, we're doing some antimicrobial stuff. Um, COVID has been a crazy year, as everybody's familiar with. Um, so we're, we're using a lot of uh, polymers and, and different filaments that are antimicrobial. Uh, so what that is, we're trying to help stop that spread. And that's kind of a market we've wanted to get into. Um, it seems like there's a lot of companies trying to do that but not all of them are successful and pushing through to the end. So we're trying to get in as early as we can as well. So we can really kind of find another niche of ours and, and be successful with that. Um, and like I mentioned before, we have a lot of local companies that are kind of relying on us for, for certain projects. Um, we've got a few breweries here in town um, that we've made custom um, beer tap handles for. And that's something kind of fun. You know, they can bring a napkin sketch in and say, here, you know, I want something custom. We have our own, on beer label that we want to, to promote. So we've actually created some, some tap handles for that. And that was kind of a fun project to kind of get the word out in the local community as well. Um, so that's something we've, we've also done. And we, uh, we really like those kind of one-off projects as well. You know, yeah, they're not gonna turn into a full large production scale, but it gets our, our, uh, our expertise out on, on any project, you know, we don't have to, to focus in and dial in. It keeps us diverse and that's something we really, really like. Um, I uh, do want to pass over to Rakesh as well and kind of give you a little background as far as how he became the owner and, and operator of Shabri. It's kind of an interesting story. Thanks, Kyler. Um, I think that you updated uh, very well about Shabri. Shabri was evolved, uh, you know, based on our research with University of Nebraska for some uh, prosthetics devices that we were making for uh, kids. And that was the primary reason um, 
you know, for me to get involved into the 3D printing. And uh, then I started to look around and there was a lot of need, just not for the prosthetics, but also the design services. Um, you know, how we can just uh, uh, create a prototype, um, can we provide some of the products um, to different uh, industries um, other than just prosthetics and orthotics. So that's how we are in, uh, we have our own uh, 5,600 square foot area in Hastings and uh, our goal is to uh, uh, keep growing and uh, provide uh, innovative solutions for whether it is a university setup or uh, agriculture industries or um, you know, the service industry. Fantastic, thanks for the, for the background on Shabri. Um, so just a, a quick follow-up, you guys focus on additive manufacturing. Um, what types of, I'm assuming that's mostly plastics, um, and, and what types of, of plastics are you able to print in? So primarily it's all FDM printing. Um, we can do anything from your standard PLAs, TPUs, all the way up to your carbon fibers, your peaks. Um, not a lot of limitations as far as the plastics. Uh, we don't have any, any metal printing as of now. That's something we're going to look, look to here in the future, but um, we're capable of all the high temp um, filaments as well. So that's something we, we like to dabble in, especially on the, the prosthetic side where we can kind of filter in that, that carbon fiber or the, the little tougher materials for everyday use. That's something that uh, we've gotten pretty good at. Fantastic. Um, and then you mentioned, you know, you, you really um, get passionate about kind of unique one-off projects and that's that's what 3D printing, you know, really is very good at. Um, just out of curiosity, are you able to handle batch orders as well? Um, and if so, you know, what kind of uh, numbers are we talking? I know it all depends on relative size and, um, you know, <laughs> plastic volume and things like that. But do you have an example of batch orders you've been able to do too? Yeah, uh, actually one of our proprietary items is antimicrobial foam cases and we're doing that in large numbers right now. Um, we're able to print just about 800 a week. Um, and for a company our size, we're pretty proud of that, um, especially with only having one technician running right now. It's, it's uh, all we can do to keep up. That's, that's what we want to do. We want to be able to provide batch manufacturing as well as the rapid prototyping in a larger you know, um, batch quality. So we're definitely capable. And like Rocky said, um, as numbers increase and products increase, we'll just have to expand just like everybody else. And that's something we're prepared to do. And just to add Perfect. to that, uh, Tyler, um, yep. what our goal is, the Shabri's goal is to become a printing hub in um, you know, central Nebraska. Uh, so we can just uh, not just produce uh, in the batch for uh, inside the US, but our goal is also to reach uh, globally and um, um, sell those products um, outside the border. Very good. Okay, uh, well, we're opening it up to questions at this point. I don't see um, any questions at the, the moment. That's fine, I have plenty to ask, um, but please feel free if you do have a question to just type it into the chat um, or to raise your hand through Zoom and I can go ahead and call on you and um, we can engage our panelists in dialogue. So I guess I'll open it up. Um, thanks again for joining us. So we, you know, our panelists were, uh, represent sort of the full spectrum here of um, additive manufacturing and prototyping um, locally, you know, all the way from, we have, we have Brian and Travis who really specialize on, on research driven, you know, hard engineering questions, as well as um, a wide array of, of capabilities um, and their core all the way to, you know, we have Shabri who is, is uh, good at, at one-offs, but also brute force additive manufacturing capabilities, you know, printing large batches and FDM as well, all the way then to um, Omaha Custom who, who can do some of all of that, but really is, you know, fills the gap of injection molding, which, which the other two can't really do. So just kind of a general question out there um, for, for the three of you, and you can just take turns talking, we can lead off with Brian and Travis, I suppose. And then if, if others want to chime in, you know, please feel free to raise your hand or just chime in. Um, how do you distinguish between those types of services? And, you know, for, for someone who, who's kind of, who doesn't, who, has, who is unfamiliar with additive manufacturing or prototyping, but has an idea, um, what sort of advice would you have for them on, you know, uh, on how to engage with these types of services and, and things to keep in mind? 
Yeah, so I think from, from our perspective, uh, one thing that I always make sure that we're clear about is we are not a mass fabrication um, site, right? We are very much specialized in the, the proof of concepts, the one-off prototype, um, getting you to a point where you can pass it off to, a, to one of the other um, and companies that are here, you know, Shabri or, or Omaha, Omaha Custom. So <clears throat> we are really specialized in that ideation and, and kind of problem solving aspect of, of invention. So um, if you're coming to us, it's important to know that that's what our strength is. So if you need a hundred of something delivered in a, in a week, we're not going to do that most likely. There may, be a, there may be a chance we could, but most likely we're not going to be able to do that. Um, so I think importantly on our side, it's the, you're paying, you're, you're coming to us for the access to the research expertise, the resources within the building, which I just also wanted to make sure I noted of, um, we are within our biomechanics research building. So we are surrounded by, you know, I think upwards of 10 or so research labs in different areas of biomechanics, including, you know, human movement, neuroimaging, um, cardiovascular biomechanics, kind of the whole, the whole suite of biomechanics applications that we, that we do. So oftentimes the best projects for us are ones that are in that type of field, right? And, and I think the other advantage of coming to us in, in terms of what we provide is if you have something that's meant to interface with a human, meant to be part of that kind of um, inter interactive um, biology sector, that's what we can specialize in across the hall as well. So not only can we fabricate it, but we can test it in a human right across the hall. And we can we have the equipment and the expertise to do that. So I think, you know, certainly Shabri and, and Omaha Custom have a much more sophisticated fabrication um, in terms of scale. We very much focus on um, ideas and inventions within the research space or within kind of human interaction with that device. Right. And to just, to just add to that, um, you know, what the, what the gentleman from Omaha Custom Manufacturing mentioned was that at, for advice, it's to come early, right? To come, come early in the project when you have problems that need solving uh, and, and, what uh, what Brian was saying is is right. We have we're specialized. We are really really good at solving those those difficult, especially research oriented problems. Uh, and you come early with a project like that, and we're going to tell you. We're going to give you you know our honest honest feedback on something like that, and help you get your project to uh, to the final stages. And honestly, if it's something that needs a, a large run of of printed supplies, maybe we'd forward you along so that they could be printed somewhere else. If you needed some injection molded parts or sheet metal, you know, press break produced parts, uh, we, might, we might move those along. And even that is something that we can provide as a service, just consultation, guidance, making sure you know where uh, and, and how we and maybe any of the other prototyping entities can be involved in your project. Thank you, Brian and Travis. I'll actually, I'll pass it off to, to Kyler over at Shabri next, and then we'll jump over to Omaha Custom. But Kyler, um, if you could highlight what are, you know, some of the, the, the benefits of, of, of 3D printing, um, what, you know, what, what's kind of the, the pros and cons of, of making things uh, with plastic? Yeah, so the thing to keep in mind when somebody brings you a, an idea, whether they've already got it designed up or whether, um, it's just an idea they have and, and, and foremost. The biggest thing, like everybody said, the earlier you bring it in, the better. Um, but to keep in mind that if you don't have something drawn up, it's gonna take more time and it's gonna take more money up front as far as the design phase goes. Um, the, the concept of a 3D print house is send us a final, final file and we can produce that part for you. But people are, are forgetting the fact that if you don't have a part already designed up, it's going to be that much more time for us to be able to produce something for you because we don't have anything to work off of. And that's something we struggled with in the past. Uh, we'll have clients come in and, and have these, these great ideas, but they've, they haven't put any thought into it at all. And they, they expected me to have something printed that, that next day. And that's something um, 
we've really really struggled with is is getting people to understand that concept. Yeah, we can we can definitely help you design it, but it's it's not going to be as quick as if you had a file already ready for us. Um, and so that's something um, that we've kind of struggled with, and we're we're trying to get that awareness out. Um, but as far as the the capabilities and the, the strengths and weaknesses of 3D printing, I think everybody's familiar what products and what niches you know they really are are great for and it's it's the one-off prototype that people want to physically hold something and decide is this ready to move on to the next stage of manufacturing we're ready to go to that large scale and and that's where they really really are powerful um where people start to struggle is the large productions um, trying to keep up we, we all know a 3d printer will never keep up with an injection press and that's that's a hard reality sometimes um, but we're able to be that middleman, take somebody's ideas, make it a tangible item, do some testing with it, and then, and like you said, um, move it on to the next capable um, production site. And that's kind of where 3D printing is really good at, is the, the quick prototyping, get something in your hand that you can physically see, make some design changes, and then move on in your manufacturing stage. That's a great explanation. Thank you, Kyler. Just a quick follow-up. You're doing primarily FDM. Can you handle some pretty complex geometries with, with the printers you have? Or, or what, what were some of the constraints? Well, the major constraint with, with the style of printing is whether or not you have to use a support material. And that all comes down to lead time and how quick do you want it and the quality and the finish that you're after. Um, these printers are primarily the strongest at the, the prototyping, the rapid prototyping, because you're not looking for that beautiful finish um, as, you know, injection molding would have or a, a uh, machine shop, if it, you know, the, the finish they're able to provide. It's, it's a rapid prototyping style of, of desktop printer, if you will. And uh, so that's, that's something that we do a lot of, like I said, is that prototyping and that's where our, our printers are, are good and efficient for that exact, that exact uh, niche. Yeah, fantastic. I don't want to. I don't want to hijack the whole thing into into a, a prototyping nerd fest. But I have a few. I, I'm I'm trying to figure out what exactly. What do you have behind you? I can't make out the the company, the the brand or printer there. If you don't mind telling. And then do you have do you have any multi material printers? Or are they all single material. Yep. Um, the ones behind me here are Raise 3D. They're Pro Twos, and we have a Pro Two Plus, and they're all dual extrusions, so you can definitely run two materials at once. And that's that's a pretty neat thing to be able to, to be able to do that as well. Um, We've also got a uh, fun mat HT, so we can do those higher temp materials, like I mentioned, the, the carbon fibers and your, your nylons and, and such that are printing at a lot higher temperature. And just to add, uh, Tyler, um, on our team, when you mentioned about you know the shapes and geometry, um, on our team, we have a few consultants on the, on the team that are expert in the organic shape. And I think uh, that comes from our medical background of prosthetics, because as you understand, those are uh, designed for human body, uh, the sockets. Um, um, so it has to have that organic shape. So we are capable to do the regular design services, but also able to do something that is more or organic in nature. Fantastic, thank you. Okay, and we'll go back to Omaha Custom. So just if you wouldn't mind describing again a few differences between, um, you know, just, just for, for those laymen in the audience or those unfamiliar, uh, you know, rapid prototyping and, and then more traditional prototyping. Um, and then if you wouldn't mind also describing, you know, just a few parameters around like lead times for injection molding and things like that that people just maybe aren't familiar with. Yeah, so I, the first thing I would say is, you know, uh, sometimes we have customers come to us that that think they're ready for full scale production and, and injection molding. Um, and then we really dive it down into, okay, you know, what are your sales forecasts? You know, how, how many of these do you expect to sell in the next month, two months, year, two years? And, you know, sometimes they don't know or the, the forecast is, is cost prohibitive for any type of injection molding work. Um, and so that's sometimes eye-opening for our for our customers to to you know really get their ducks in a row from a from a sales and marketing uh, perspective. Something that Mark mentioned earlier, um, because the the whole idea with injection molding or, or production stamping is uh, volume, volume, volume. So so the more volume you have, uh, the cheaper the piece part gets to produce. 
um, and, and the more um, gross profit for the customer they, they can gain from that or, or cho choose to do whatever they, you know, they want with it. Um, so that's an important point to, to mention um, when, we're, when we're kind of uh, crossing the line between prototyping and, and full scale production. Um, you know, depending on the, the geometry of the part, uh, how large the part is and what material it needs to be made out of, um, you know, some of these dyes or molds can, can be pretty expensive um, to, to produce and machine. And, and sometimes, again, I think people forget that part too. Um, and so, you know, it, sometimes a typical lead time with, with some of these molds can be, can be fairly lengthy and the cost can be, you know, can kind of creep up there too, um, it, which is not a problem if, if you have lots and lots of parts to produce, because then, you know, that payback is very quick. It, it, you run into issues where you're going to sink all this money into a mold or a die and you don't have, you know, the sales or the, or the orders in the future to kind of back up that, that kind of, uh, um, you know, capital up, up front. So uh, that, that's kind of what I would say as, as we, as we kind of navigate both worlds of, of prototyping and mass production, it's just, it's things to, to keep in mind um, and, and things to, yeah, keep track of as we, as we, you know, kind of go down these stages of, of different levels of production. And, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Tyler. And I know that that threshold between, you know, uh, whether you're ready to pull the trigger going from, you know, 3D printing to injection molding, I know it varies depending on all, all sorts of different factors. Can you kind of sort of ballpark it though? Like how many, what's the quantity that really someone should be thinking? What, what's at least like the, the, the scale? Yeah. 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 So, I mean, I, I in general, I, I would say if, if, if you were to tell someone when you, when you think of injection molding or where you, when you think of production stamping, you know, think hundreds of thousands of piece parts is good. Millions is great. You, you know, and, and maybe sometimes when you, when you talk about those quantities, people that kind of blows people's minds or they get a little scared, but you know, that's really what we're talking about. If you, if you want to, have that process work for you in the most efficient means possible. You know, those are kind of the quantities we're talking about now. Um, of course, there is short runs in, in both of those productions. Um, and so for those, you know, maybe we can go a little cheaper on the mold. Maybe we can go a little cheaper on the die, you know, not make it, not design it to last as long because we know we're only making a, a certain short run of parts and we can get a little more cost effective on, on the mold or the die in those uh, situations. But um, yeah, in general, you know, think about those volumes when, whenever you're thinking about those two processes. It, it's, uh, it, it's better for, for everyone involved, the, the end user um, and the manufacturer and everyone in between. So that, that's what I would say there. Thank you, Tyler. Um, and then one other follow-up question briefly. Um, so I know you, you touched on this already, but there's, you know, just because someone has a good design that's maybe then been um, uh, it's, it's been prototyped, it's maybe been 3D printed, that doesn't necessarily mean that the design itself is amenable to injection molding to scale up production. Do you have an example maybe from something you've worked on where, where there had to be significant work or, or adaptation or something significantly adjusted to the piece in order for it to be uh, batch produced at, at injection molding scales? Yeah, yeah sure. So, so in general, um, you know, 3D printing, it, it's very easy to, to make um, different pieces and parts that look really great and have, you know, some undercuts and some swoops in there and they're aesthetically pleasing to the eye, right? And so when you're done with your prototype, you're like, man, this looks really good. You know, I want to I wanna make 100,000 of these or I want to make a million of these. these. This is great. And then they come to, to an injection molding type process and they realize that to get all of those niceties and those aesthetics in an injection molding environment is, is more expensive than they would have guessed. And they, they you know, come to find out that it needs to be um, you know, maybe taken down a couple notches and you know, maybe, maybe we don't need this nice swoop here. Maybe we don't need all these undercuts here. Maybe we can get by with just some right angles um, on this piece um, because that's really what's going to make production cost effective for everybody. They, they, they don't realize that um, all of that different geometry gets pretty expensive when you're talking about building um, a mold for all of that. Um, and so that's, I think that's a really great example, you know, something that's very easy to do on a 3D printer and, and, and can be done fairly cost effectively, um, that, that starts to change when we talk about um, a process for, for mass production. 
Um, now, uh, I'll say that, I'll, I'll caveat that with, hey, if you've got sales forecasts and production orders for millions, hundreds of millions, then cool. You know, we can do that. You know, that makes sense then. You know, that makes sense to, to put in the design time and the work to, to get a mold that can, that can make those different pieces and parts because you have the, the quantities to back it up. Um, but if you're not quite there yet, you know, let's take a look at how this thing really needs to look and what is the, the, the real end use of this and can we get away with, you know, taking some of these, you know, maybe aesthetics away and still get the same kind of end result with whatever the product is. And what's interesting about that too, Tyler, is if you just go 3D print something and you take it and say, I want this injection molded, you could have almost the same product where one mold costs $30,000 and the one with everything you originally designed in a 3D printer costs $200,000. That's why it's important to come in to say, what are, what are the items on your product that are must-haves and what are the items on your product that you would love to incorporate? And then based on what Tyler said, depending what the, the price point is that you can sell the thing for and how many you can sell maybe the really tricked out mold for a couple hundred grand is what you want to do or when you look at your sales and marketing strategy maybe you want to start with a product that could be made out of this thirty thousand dollar mold and maybe sneak up on it a little bit and incorporate these other things in a generation two or a three and that's why it's so important as almost everybody here has discussed get in early uh, so that the professionals can talk about your options and we can walk you through the process. That's a fantastic point, Mark and Tyler. Thank you. Yeah, I'll, I'll just piggyback off of that too. I, I wouldn't be, I didn't mention briefly to the faculty, please talk to us at Unimed first um, <laughs> as well. So, uh, so yeah, we also like to hear your ideas as early as possible. <laughs> um, fantastic, well, this has been good. Um, I'll open it up to the panelists. Do you have any questions for each other? I guess briefly, we've had in prior to uh, prior panels this week, we've had good questions come from that too. So if any of you have questions for each other, um, please go ahead. And if not, that, that's fine too. That's <laughs> yeah. I, I would just say, Tyler, okay, well, not, that's not so much a question, but it seems like um, you know we both come. We're we're all coming from kind of different angles um, of this manufacturing process, so. Um, you know, just would love to, to keep in touch and, and gain any synergies we can by, by talking to each other and, and uh, helping uh, our fellow customers out the best way we can. Yeah, I, I would echo that too, is we really pride ourselves on our partners. Um, a lot of times we have a customer come in, we'll handle the project from beginning to end, but we need good solid partners like your other panelists today. So I'd love to get their contact information. If we have a project that really fits their expertise is that a piece of the puzzle, we would, we would love to partner with them and bring them in to work on that project with us. You, you, guys, have, you guys read my mind. That's where I was gonna go with, with my final question. I was just gonna make, make sure that all of you, um, please enter your contact information into, into the chat. And then we, we can go one at a time. So we'll just go in reverse order here. We can start with you two, Tyler and Mark. Just please go, go ahead and, and if you wanna also verbally just mention how, what's the best way to engage with you with Omaha. Yeah, so so the best way to, to get a hold of us uh, is to get a hold of me. Um, I would say, and um, email works great, or or a phone call. Sometimes I'm um, I'm in different places, so I don't get to the phone as quickly as I would maybe uh, an email. So I would say uh, email is best, and then we can link up uh, there um, shortly thereafter. So I'll type in um, yeah, both my email address and phone number, and um, kind of just go from there. Thank you, Tyler. Um, go ahead, Kyler at Shabri. What's the best way to get a hold of you guys? It, same thing goes for us as well. Email seems to be the quickest, most efficient way anymore. Um, how often do we all miss a phone call here and there? But that email is there to stay and you can physically see it. So for us, we'll, uh, we'll definitely have our emails as well as phone numbers as kind of a backup plan. But moving forward, email is kind of the new way for us. Thanks, Kyler. Yeah, if you, if you want to enter in your, you know, you know maybe also your web website for Shabri so people can, can find you. Um, and then Brian and Travis, um, what's the best way to get a hold of you and, and, and or find your, your project initiation form? Yeah, believe it or not, email is probably the best way to contact us as well. Um, <laughs> uh, we have certainly our, our core email address, so that goes not only to me, but also to Travis and our other staff. Um, so we all will see it at the same time, which is uh, by far the easiest and most kind of convenient way to to interact with us. Um, and then we also have our website that has that initiation form. 
if you reach out via email first, we can send that to you or help you fill it out too. So don't feel like you need to have that ready to go. Um, but I'll put in uh, our email address and our, our website link as well into the chat. Thank you, Brian. Okay, um, seeing no final questions, uh, uh, we'll go ahead and, and stop a little early on a Wednesday, that's fine. This has been very informative. I always enjoy having this discussion. Um, and so I, I, I greatly appreciate again, on behalf of Unimed having the, the three of your awesome organizations um, joining us today in this panel discussion. I this will be hugely informative for um, our faculty as well. Uh, just a reminder, you can find this, you'll be able to find this up later this week on, on Unimed's YouTube probably even up by tomorrow. Um, and I just, just a thank you again to all of our expert panelists for, for taking time out of your day to join us today. Thank you.